Hello everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit. We have a user request from Calvin Smith, not electricity related, but in response to a previous rust balloon flying video, which asked, how much fuel does it take to fly the damn balloon around? Well, I thought that was a great question, so I decided to try and find out. So, I made myself a balloon, spawned myself a 4,000 uh, by 4,000 map, largest size map available, and figured I'd try flying from one side of the map to the other side of the map. So, here we go. Putting in 500 low grade, the maximum vanilla amount allowed inside the tank on the hot air balloon, and away we go. Ideally, before the bear or the pig come and eat my ass. That's not what I meant. Anyway, the principles of flying the hot air balloon, as is true in the real world, is if you want to go a particular direction, you have to find the wind currents at that altitude. In Rust, your vertical area that you can work in is fairly small. So you'll see as I'm burning here, we're going to go through basically two to two and a half transitions of the wind from one direction to another. We're watching the windsock and the little flag next to the on off button to see where we're pointing here. See we're not burning too much fuel yet. And it turned itself off here. If you leave the button on for too long it will turn itself off. So you got to turn it back on again. But in order to hold an altitude, what you'll find is that you need to turn the burner off basically once a second, second and a half, maybe two seconds. And if you let off for much longer than that, you'll start to sink. You'll stop and start sinking rapidly. That's what the balloon likes to do is dive to one side if you leave the burner off for more than a couple seconds. So uh, here I'm actually just trying to get up higher but what I'm finding is I've already hit the ceiling of the allowed altitude for the balloon. And the ceiling of the allowed altitude to fly here is the wrong direction. I'm trying to fly down southeast to that lake that's near the power plant. And this is the wrong direction. So this ain't going to work out gonna have to go ahead and do an audible here drop down find the altitude layer just below this where the wind direction is going to go the other way because I don't want to go out to sea any further I'm trying to go to the opposite side of the map all right so just cutting out a few seconds of video here as I drop back down You'll see as I come back down to the layer just below where I was, I'm going to hit the burner just as I'm about to fall through the direction. It's going to keep me there. And here we go. So now I'm just going to keep giving it a little gas every few seconds. You can see that the longer it's off, the more I sink, the more the wind shifts. In the way I'm going right here, the wind shifts from right to left every time I drop. It shifts from left to right as I go up. So a little bit of burn, and it starts taking me a little more to the right. If I let off for too long, it's gonna sink down. And I'm standing right behind the flag. We're flying the direction we're looking, which makes this a little easier to see. Plus you can see the big wind sock, which is even better. So I'm just gonna keep burning here. And uh, I will tell you right now that this takes a little bit of time because the balloon is not fast. It's not too bad on the fuel burn, but it's not fast either. So you're trading uh, fuel for speed. The other thing you're trading is capacity. The mini copter is quite a bit faster, but you can only carry the one passenger with you. The balloon, uh, I genuinely don't know how many people you can cram into the balloon, but I've been in this with uh, nine people all shooting at things like helicopters and uh, things like that uh, you can also shoot rockets out the door which is fun so 
unlike the minicopter, if you want to move a gaggle of people around uh, and be huge sitting ducks, this works fantastically. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to speed this up just a little bit. Here we go. All right. Turning it up to 300% speed. This voiceover is all in post-production because of these changes, so I can tell you that this flight takes... Well, the stopwatch said it took about 10 minutes, but to be fair, the actual flight time was around 9 minutes. Um, there was about 40 seconds of screwing around at the beginning to get the right altitude going the right direction. Uh, save the actual getting to altitude part obviously you have to have that um, I cut out about 30 seconds of going the wrong direction and then as you'll see here in a moment I'm gonna screw up and drop backwards a little bit so let's go back to normal speed here you can see there's a power plant I'm coming up on the lake I want to drop into here um, this is where I screwed up and I wanted to drop to a lower altitude so that I wasn't quite as high dropping out of the sky, but I ended up burning right here and going backwards, which is not what I intended to do. What I really wanted to do was drop down to the next layer, which I will do here, and then go the correct direction. So, a little too far there, but I'm going to correct it and come back up. So. There's a good 30 second penalty here for going the wrong damn direction, although save a few seconds for the actual altitude loss. Now, get it back on track, head back in towards the lake. Don't run into trees. That is a thing. You can run into trees if you haven't done it. Running into trees or power lines um, not the power lines, because they're invisible technically, they're not solid, but you can run into the stands. That'll ruin your day in a helicopter or in a hot air balloon. So power off, and you just drop straight down in, nice and quick. And ultimately that was just a hair over nine minutes flying time to get myself from the north part of the island all the way down to the south part of the island, sort of southeast. Uh, part of the island from the northwest part and you can see 407 units of fuel so not bad 100 units of fuel to fly for uh, 10 minutes it's not bad it's about 10 units of fuel per minute uh, I imagine if I was a little more uh, careful there I could probably prove that the burn rate is roughly about 10 units per minute um, on the balloon. Now, of course, we have the minicopter available to us. This is a heck of a lot faster and more maneuverable, but it does burn fuel quite a bit faster. So let's fly back from whence we came, and I'm going to try and follow a similar route. Let me just get up in the air here and Let's see, this thing whips around nice and clean. And let's go back the other way. Let's take a couple seconds off the timer for that. And here we go. And this isn't quite a straight route, but I'm going to follow the same route I did with the balloon, just because I want this to be a highly scientific and ultra-precise experiment. Or just roughly kind of bullshitting it the same way I got over here. The one thing I'm trying to avoid is the launch site because uh, the launch site will shoot you down in any of these vehicles. Alright. Take roughly the same track back to the northwest. This will take us roughly over the outpost again. And then I'm going to go find that beach right next to the river, right there where we started. There's 
the outpost, so... I could take a slightly straighter route to the right of the mountain, but I'm not going to. I'm going to follow the same route that I did in the balloon. Let's see if I can't uh, speed this up again here. And here we go, 300% speed again. Don't you wish you could actually fly this fast in the minicopter? Holy crap, would that get you places quick. Totally wrong audio here. <laughs> Alright. Cut back to normal speed. And it so happens that the real-time stopwatch on this is just coming up shy of three minutes. So what took us just a hair over nine minutes going in the balloon, the same route coming back, it's going to take us pretty much exactly three minutes just a slight hair over three minutes take a look at the fuel 408 so almost the same amount of fuel burn for one-third the time so not necessarily a fuel advantage using one over the other because it uses uh, one-third the fuel to fly the balloon but it goes one-third as fast so you're gonna end up burning about the same amount of fuel um, but again, hello little piggy, you're going to have the same problem uh, with capacity that I mentioned in the balloon flight over, which is you can take one person with you on this minicopter, and uh, you can take probably a dozen plus people uh, in the balloon. So if taking a lot of people is of interest to you, then you probably want to take the balloon instead of the minicopter. Uh, however, I am reminded that uh, we now have the scrap heli, which will also help us accomplish basically the same thing of getting more people there. So let's try that out. I'm going to put the same amount of fuel in, the requisite and maximum allowed, 500 units of low grade. And then we'll jump into this scrap heli. Like I said, probably a dozen of your closest friends with maybe some big guns and some missile launchers. Um, I haven't actually tried shooting rockets out of the scrap heli. Uh, somebody can tell me in the comments if that works. I'm assuming you can shoot rockets out of the rear of this thing. Um, don't mind the flaming ball of scrap heli on the ground. I don't know where that possibly could have come from. But, again, I'm going to fly just about the same route back to the lake up by the power plant that we took with the balloon and took return with the minicopter. And, in the interest of time and boredom and ADHD, let's speed this up again. Alright, so here we are. 300 plus percent speed again. Going to zoom past the outpost. Man, it'd be nice if the helicopters went this fast. You know, maybe we need a scrap Apache or something that's uh, well armed and faster in the game. Wouldn't that be sweet? Maybe some mods so that you can attach some rocket launchers onto the minicopter or the scrap heli. You are supposed to play this game with friends, though, so throw a couple on the back of this with some weapons and have a good time. Alright, let's slow back down here. And we'll take ourselves down into the lake. In this case, the real-world timer, or the real-time timer on this video, has us going over three minutes. So we're going to come in on the original location of our hot air balloon here. Not quite three and a half. Probably about 320-ish. Now, I'm going to chalk up the fact that this takes a little bit longer than the minicopter, primarily to my flying and the maneuverability. I've done a lot of flying in the minicopter. I haven't done much in the scrap heli. It's kind of a pig. It's a little bit slower to get around. Um, so, not necessarily speed, but maneuverability. 
And you can see we burned a little over 400 this time, which makes sense because we flew just a little bit longer, almost not quite three and a half minutes. So there you have it. Um, the scrap and the minicopter go about three times faster than the balloon, but burn three times the fuel. Uh, you need about 10 units of fuel per minute for that balloon. So that should answer your question, Kelvin. Good luck, and don't suck.